this woman's mind is a terrifying place to be. Head empty, no thoughts, just murder vibes. In the book, not in real life. You know, in this economy, who can buy books? He's really in his... What is it? Man whore, man wife, man slaughter era. And I'm not a fan. Hey friends, it's Sarah and I am... Spooked. So, it's spooky season, it's the beginning of October right now, and I thought I would get myself in the mood and try and read like a little, a little bit of a scary book, maybe like a thriller. I'm a baby, um, I cannot handle scary books at all, but I did say that I would read one of, I can't pronounce her name, Irsa Sigurdardottir. I said I would read one of her books um, as part of my like 12 books recommended by 12 friends over 12 months challenge and this was the author recommended to me so I found a book from her from the library and thought I would give it a shot and I was like you know I know myself I can't read this at night or I won't be able to sleep and I'm not going to read it like when I have my early morning shifts I won't read it in the morning because it's still dark out and that makes things too spooky for me I'm a baby I'm I have the like scare tolerance of a five-year-old if that so I was like, I'll read it in broad daylight. Being smart, making good decisions. This is self-care. I am 16 pages in and I've already spooked myself. It's not even that scary. Like the first little bit, there's like a prologue where they're talking about splitting up uh, three siblings whose parents have died. And that was fine. And then literally like two pages into the like main chunk of the story from like 30 years 40 years later it's like a woman's asleep and she wakes up and her young daughter is standing there like there's a man in our house i saw him sitting in the dark and i was like nope i'm so spooked now even though it is broad daylight it is not even 2 p.m it's going to be like 21 degrees celsius out which is insane for october but i thought i would maybe just like vlog my experience reading this um, depending on how interesting it is, and as a way to, like, kind of motivate myself to, like, keep reading it so I can update y'all, because I, it does, like, I am intrigued by this. I do want to read it. I want to expand my horizons and be less of a baby, but I am so small, emotionally so small, so this is very difficult for me. I'll, I'll read you the synopsis so you can judge for yourself whether or not I will be scared. So, the synopsis says, the murder was meant as a punishment, but what sin could justify the method? The only person who might have answers is the victim's seven-year-old daughter, found hiding in the room where her mother died, and she's not talking. Newly promoted, out of his depth, Detective Holdar... Oh, this is where I need the pronunciation guide. Hold on. Newly promoted, out of his depth, Detective Huldar turns to Freya and the children's house for their expertise with traumatized young people. Freya, who distrusts the police in general, and Huldar in particular, isn't best pleased but she's determined to keep little Margaret safe. It may prove tricky. The killer is leaving them strange clues, warnings, and text messages. Some scribbled on bits of paper, numbers broadcast on the radio. He's telling a dark and secret story, but how can they crack the code? And if they do, will they be next? So this is the first in a series. I'm kind of thinking that the mom is one of the children who was abandoned like at the beginning of the book, one of the three kids who was like orphaned and that the killer might be one of the brothers. I could be entirely wrong, like that seems way too obvious, but like that's that's gonna be my guess right now. But apart from already being spooked, I do find so far that um, the author like describes a lot of like fairly mundane things. There's a lot of description going on, which is neither good nor bad, it's just kind of the style so far, which is a little bit different. Um, I should also mention uh, this is translated from Icelandic by Victoria Cribb, so good job Victoria. And I also appreciate that they included a pronunciation guide at the beginning of the book for the characters' names. I wish there was one for the author's name, but we can't win them all. Yeah, so I'm gonna do some more reading and I'll let you know how things go. Like, put down in comments your predictions. Will I be scared of this? 
I tried to choose like a non-supernatural one because I find like true crime less scary than supernatural stuff for whatever reason. I don't know, weird white girl syndrome. But um, I don't know, this is kind of freaking me out already, so. Ugh. But uh, yeah, well, I'll see, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so it's been a day, a couple days. I can't remember when I last filmed, but it's been a little bit and I'm now on page 314. So I have like 150-ish pages left to go in The Legacy by, I don't know, I can't say her name, by the Icelandic lady. And it's less scary than it was at the beginning, but there are moments like every now and then where I'm like, Wah! because the, the murderer's MO is so gruesome. I feel like the author's not super duper descriptive of like what the victim's bodies look like, but just the way that they're killed is so gruesome that she doesn't need to like explain in depth the like their injuries and stuff for me to be really like feel really icky about it. So I'm glad I'm reading it during the day because I think if I read that at night, I would have nightmares about that. And I'm definitely enjoying the book more now than kind of at the beginning. Because at the beginning, there were a few like different points of view of people. And you're like, okay, so you've got like the detective and then you've got like the child protective services lady and you, you know how they're linked. Like their stories are kind of together anyways. And then there's like this other guy and you're like, how is he involved in this? And now things are starting to like come together a little bit. Like you're still not, I'm still not sure like who the murderer is or why they're doing this, what's going on with all the, like the weird number like puzzles that they're sending out, but you can kind of see how they how they're kind of coming together eventually. Not like what the conclusion is, but you're like, "Ooh, that there's some similarities going on here. They're going to have a crossover." The one thing I'm not enjoying quite as much in here is like the lead detective Kuldar has like a couple of detectives on his team and one of them's a woman and she's like kind of has feelings for him and there's just like a lot of him being like I don't know how to dissuade her but I'm also not addressing it at all I'm just kind of letting her misunderstand my attention and assume that I have feelings I'm attracted to her as well and not just that like I'm her boss giving her work to do I don't really enjoy that all that much or that like <sighs> Like they go, him and like his underling, Erla, go to the like Child Protective Services lady, Freya's house, and they're like talking to her and Erla's like being rude to her and like giving her like the side eye and like, don't talk to him kind of vibes, like Jill's girlfriend kind of vibes. And I'm like, that's incredibly unprofessional. How do you not get like chewed out by your boss? For doing that like he should have like taken her to task and been like hey you can't talk to people like that we're in a professional capacity also we're not dating so like back the fuck off and then like later he's like oh we need to like send um like more protection over to her place because like stuff's going on and she's got like a child in protective custody right now and then earl is like Ugh, i don't want to like why should we send things over there like she's fine she's a psychologist she could She'll be fine wherever she's got a dog. And he's like, she's literally got like the child witness in her custody right now, but also like, what the heck is wrong with you? Of course we're gonna protect someone who seems to be like, someone's like going after them. Like, ugh, she just drives me crazy. I hate her. She's terrible. Like, Huldar, why aren't you doing something about this? Why aren't you like, being like, hey, look it. We're just colleagues. You can't act like my jealous girlfriend whenever I talk to a woman, like back off. It's incredibly unprofessional and I'm gonna have to like kick you off the team. And then also he had like slept with his other underling's wife several months ago and is like consumed with guilt about that. And I hate that too. He's really in his, what is it? Man whore, man wife, man slaughter era. And I'm not a fan, but yeah, he's just kind of like a mess. and I think that might be a bit of a theme in like some mystery genre like books because the only other mystery books I've really read are the ones by Robert Galbraith which is JK Rowling so we don't read those anymore because we don't support transphobes in this household 
but um, it was kind of a similar vibe of like he slept around a lot and it's causing his personal life causes issues for him in his like work life and there's like some sort of like personal work life clashes and like misunderstandings and stuff and it's like similar vibes here we've got kind of the main guy who's a little grouchy and kind of unapproachable but somehow still like an aphrodisiac to women and they're always like oh my god and it causes him all sorts of problems i'm not sure if i'm really a fan of that as much that's not a huge part of the book so it doesn't really throw me off that much but just every now and then i'm like get your life together you're a grown-ass man come on pull yourself together so yeah i'm gonna try and finish this in the next few days and probably update you at the end of the book so i will see you then Hello, I'm back. I finished the book and I did not die. I did have a little nightmare um, the night after I finished it, but that was my bad. I was so close to being done. So I read like the last little bit in bed and then I did not read a non-scary book afterwards as like a palate cleanser. So I did have a little nightmare and wake up at four in the morning, but it's okay. I survived um, and I'm giving this four stars. I quite enjoyed it. It was like a little creepy here and there, mostly at the beginning. And it was more, like, gruesome than, like, overly creepy. Irsa's got a bit of a twisted mind. Girl's a little, a little funky. So I wanted to check on her. Is she okay? I did quite enjoy it. I liked the relationship between, like, the two main characters. Actually, I was so interested in seeing it develop further that I went and got the next two books out of the library because it it's a little like it feels like true crime books and I like true crime books and I just I think the two main characters have good chemistry and I am I'm looking honestly I'm looking for something to fill the void that the Cuckoo's Calling series has left uh now that we're now that I'm no longer reading those I want something like that where we've got the like two main characters who've got great chemistry and they're solving interesting crimes. And I think this could be it. So I'm going to try reading the next couple books and see how that goes. Man, I did not see that twist coming. Who baby? Uh, I did call that it was one of the brothers from the prologue who did the murder. However, I thought he was going to murder like his mom and his like sister. It turns out that he is actually married to his sister and they were trying to get pregnant not knowing they were siblings and she got pregnant and then found out they were siblings and was like heck no and so got an abortion the reasonable thing to do in that situation i believe but he's like a little messed up because he's also the product of incest because his mom was raped by her father his grandfather and that's how she gave birth to these children <sighs> um and so he's a little messed up in the head, and so he kill he's like, no, I want this baby, even though you're my sister. We are now man and wife, and that supersedes our literal blood relation. Anyways, and so he like kills he's trying to get revenge on like the doctor who performed the abortion, but he wasn't home, so he kills the doctor's wife. And then he like kills like a, a former teacher who would who his wife slash sister. Just saying that phrase makes me want to puke. Um like she goes to her like old science teacher to be like, what do I do? And the teacher's like, mm, I can help you get an abortion if you'd like. So it, he, kills the, he kills them and then he's got like his biological brother's adopted brother that he's trying to frame for the crimes. I feel like I need like a mind, like a crime map with the strings, but the guy he's trying to frame, his friend helps the murderer like plant stuff on the guy he's trying to frame, and then the murderer kills the friend because he knows who he is. Absolutely insane. Um, even more insane is the fact that it was a detective on the police force. Uh, just the last like 30 pages or 50 pages as they were like revealing this stuff, I was just sitting there like, uh, what, wait, what? And, and wait, what, what are you saying? <laughs> So, um, yeah, a 10 out of 10 plot twist, did not see that coming. But when I like thought back on the book, I was like, oh, so like when like our main detective was like, man, him and his wife were like so good together. They are like so similar in so many ways. They're like true soulmates. And it's like, nope, they're siblings, not soulmates. Excellent job. I'm excited to see what happens in these next books. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe this will be a two or three book vlog. 
It depends when I read these books. I don't know when I'm going to get to them or when this video is coming out, but maybe I will update you about these other books if I start reading them. Hello friends, I am back. I have the second book in the Freya and Huldar series by this author whose name I can't pronounce. Um, if, if you've noticed, I am almost done it. Um, I started reading it yesterday and have been so engrossed in it that I forgot to take the time to update y'all that this is going to be, I guess, a series video. But I am thoroughly enjoying this. Um, this is The Reckoning and it is less gruesome than the first book, The Legacy, but not by like a ton. Like there's, I think the first book was like gruesome, like right off the bat. It was like, ooh, that's pretty like upsetting right off the bat. Whereas here you don't hear about the people's experience being like killed. You just kind of find them post death and you're like, ooh, that's gross. But it's not as, I don't know, like thriller-y. It's more like mystery, which I like a little bit better. I also think this one feels a little more cohesive than the last one. Um, I did give the first book four stars because I quite enjoyed it, even though it gave me little nightmares. But this one, I think, um, like, when there are the chapters with, like, a different point of view who's not, like, from Freya or Holdar, it feels like you're like, oh, okay, I know who this person is and how they're connected, kind of. I guess maybe, maybe what I'm trying to say is that you find out the connection between, like, this new point of view fairly quickly, whereas the first book there was, like, the radio number station guy who showed up pretty early on in the book but you didn't really find out his connection until like over halfway through the book and so you're kind of following him being like what does this have to do with anything like what's going on and there were like a couple little things here and there but for the most part I was just kind of like where do you come into this when are we when are we gonna figure out what's going on with you and I was more invested in like Freya and Huldar Huldar I don't know how to say his name I was more invested in the two main characters than in him so it kind of took me out of it a little bit. This one's going really good so far. It seems like slightly more straightforward, so I'm waiting for the big plot twist. I am on page 336 out of 406, so I'll probably finish this, if not tonight, then tomorrow. So first off, I like starting this, I was like, I don't know who's doing these murder things. Maybe it's the guy they think it is, the like pedophile who's finally been released from jail. But now I'm like, I think it's gonna be his daughter. And she's like going after the people who got her father acquitted when her like case of like her being abused by her father had gone to court. I think she's going to go after everyone who got him like acquitted and off of the charge, the child abuse charge. That's going to be my guess. I don't know. Who knows? It's, it's very twisty. Two main characters are, no, actually Freya's doing fine. She's living her best life, sort of, not really. She's, you know, she's, she's doing okay. Huldar, on the other hand, strangle him. The man is so emotionally immature and he just needs to stay away from alcohol entirely. And then um, also just, you know, keep it in his pants because he just keeps sleeping with like the worst person he could in every situation. He's like, it turns out I actually have actual feelings for Freya. Whoop, slipped and got drunk and slept with my boss. How could this possibly go wrong? Ugh. Ugh. So here's holding out hope that he gets a brain and stops drinking like insane amounts of alcohol all the time and so he can stop falling into bed with random women. That'd be nice. There's still another three, I think she's so far written like three other books in this series after this one. So there's still a lot of time to like really stretch out his character development, which means that I might spend the next few books just screaming at him. But it's fine. It's fine. It's like, it's not enjoyable exactly, but it is like the fun, like, ah, oh, I care about these characters. Why are they so boneheaded? And not like the, ugh, I can't believe I have to read about this character again. So it is, it is me being invested in the book, which is ultimately what I'm here for. So basically this is about a letter that's found in like a school time capsule where one of the students has like written out like in 2016, like when the time capsule gets opened, falling people are gonna die and like writes initials um, and then so they're like oh we should investigate see if this is like someone planning to commit murders when they were like 14 and carrying it out when they're like 24 and then 
as like they're investigating that there's also this other case of like a guy turns up dead and he's linked to this like pedophile who has recently been released from jail and so like that's going on too and other people are turning up dead and like weird stuff's going on and it seems to like maybe be linked back to this letter somehow and they kind of like the cases are like kind of converging but it's still not entirely clear what the heck is going on but the initials in the letter are lining up with the people who are turning up dead and who are being involved in this case so it's like oh what the heck did we have a little baby psychopath and we didn't realize it i don't know and everyone's just being real cagey and there's like files missing from these old cases that they're trying to investigate and just real sketchy shit the cops are incompetent incompetent Jack Edwards, I'm coming for your brand. I will get back to you once I finish this and we'll see if my prediction was right. I mean, if it is, like, I'm pretty far through the book, so, like, I feel like I can't get points for that. Insert that tweet about, like, wanting to get a good grade in predicting <laughs> mystery plots as if that's a normal and achievable goal. Um, but yeah, I'll, we'll see if I'm right about this. And then uh, before I start the next one, I will let you know what my prediction is after just like the first little bit and not 90% of the way through the book. But I'm having lots of fun. This was a great recommendation by my friend. I think this might be like one of the best recommendations I got from my friends. Maybe just because it's kind of pushed me out of my comfort zone, but then I've discovered an author that I'm really enjoying and like have picked up other ones of their books. I think maybe a close follow-up would be Transcending Kingdom because I did go out and buy the next book by that uh, same author. Like that was also a great recommendation but also more in a genre that i had read before whereas this is like i've never really read an adult like thriller mystery crime book i don't know what this genre is but this has been a very fun foray into that and i feel like i maybe am pushing my boundaries a little bit on like how much scary stuff i can read but i haven't died of fright yet so that's good <laughs> i don't know i'll i'll, I'll see ya I'll see you in a little bit. I'll see you when I'm done this and when I start my next one. Hello. Um, I just got out of the shower, so sorry for the wet hair, but I finished The Reckoning in like a day and this was four stars again, even better than the first one. Just as twisty and twisted, this woman's mind is a terrifying place to be. She can think of all sorts of crimes that I could never imagine. So like, good job, but also like, Oh boy. <laughs> um, it was really great. I did not at all predict who the murderer was. I fell for her red herrings in thinking that it was the girl whose dad was a pedophile. And once again, it was like, oh, it's someone completely different, but you could follow kind of like the little breadcrumb she had left. Like, I don't know if I would ever be able to guess exactly what was going on, but like looking back on the book, I'm like, oh, okay, so like, that's why we talked about this. Or like, that's what they were doing over here. In the character relationship side of things, frickin' Huldar, Huldar, I, I don't think I'm saying his name right, but it's fine, uh, got off scot-free. Ah, this man. So he, I can't remember if I said this last time, but he ends up getting drunk, sleeping with his boss, and then he's like, oh shoot, that was just like a drunk relationship. What do I do? I gotta like tell her we can't do this. And then I have feelings for the child psychologist, but like, Ah, and then the child psychologist founds out that he slept with his boss and so he's like, oh god, what have I done? But then he is being interviewed by, there's like an investigation going on because he stubbed his cigarette out in the pedophile's eye like a champ. Then the like top brass are like, it's okay that, like it's okay we know we were tipped off that your boss has been sexually harassing you and he's like, sorry, what? You know, like, it's, you know what, men don't come forward, someone's come forward for you, and it's, like, totally fine, like, just tell us what happened, and, like, we'll take care of it. And he's like, that's not what happened. No, this was consensual, and, like, that's not what happened. And he takes, he has to, like, convince them that he wasn't sexually harassed, and then they're like, okay, well, if you have a sexual relationship with your boss, it has to end now, and that can't happen, or she might be fired, or, like, demoted. And so he's like, Oh my god, a miracle. I've been saved. I don't have to break up with her. The head honchos have broken up with her for me. I don't have to deal with this. And I was like, god damn it, Huldar. It's not fair that you just get away with this and you don't have to like deal with your emotions. That bastard. I think what frustrates me so much is I'm like, 
you have the potential, you're so close, and then you just blow it every time. So hopefully next next book he'll get his shit together. I did pick up the third book, The Absolution. I am 58 pages into it. So far it's going pretty good. Freya is like pissed off with Huldar and is like, I don't want to deal with you, just like freaking leave me alone. Which is kind of where she is every book. We always kind of start off with her being like, you done fucked up, bro. And he's like, sorry, can I come feed the ducks with you? <laughs> Which is very sweet, but also like, pull it together, man. Act like it. He's really in his like man whore era and he's trying to make it to the man wife era. But right now it's the manslaughter man whore. Rough. So this one is, uh, they find a teen girl who has been like murdered at cinema where she works and her like attack was filmed and like sent on snapchat to a bunch of her friends of her like apologizing like the murderer makes her apologize and like films her and then sends it out and then like haven't like for sure killed her yet but they're pretty sure she's dead uh and it says on the back it says um they must stop a ruthless killer take your revenge on teenage bullies so i think because we've just been introduced to this character david is that how you say it should be how you say it. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's Davith. Spelled like David. Uh, so Davith has been bullied online, like cyber bullied and like depressed and stuff. And so I think maybe his father is gonna be the one getting revenge on the bullies. I'm probably completely wrong and it's like some random character that we only hear from a few times or like someone I just like do not expect at all. But this is my guess. I think it's gonna be Davith's father. I will get back to y'all and let you know if I'm right. I'm probably not, but I have to keep reading this while it's still daylight out so I don't give myself nightmares. I haven't had nightmares since that first night, so that's good. We're improving. This is character growth, but I will get back to y'all once this is done. I finished another one. I stayed up far too late and got three hours of sleep, but I finished it. And I was uh, like, I kind of a little bit right about who the murderer was. Um, it ended up being like three people, but I was right that David's dad was one of them. So I'm giving myself a point for that. But uh, this was really good again. They just keep getting better. Um, I think this one was definitely like the least gruesome so far, which was nice and like definitely not in nightmare territory the way that the other two were. A lot less graphic, which was lovely. Um, Huldar is still just like the most emotionally immature man ever. Just can't figure out his life. He's always pursuing Freya in like very sweet ways where he's like, can I take you out to dinner? Can I help you feed the ducks? Can I take care of your niece with you? Very sweet. But then he's like, she said, no, I'm going to go get rip roaring drunk and sleep with the most inappropriate woman I can find, which is big oof. But in this one, he was doing better. He didn't sleep with anyone inappropriate. They almost went on like a little date. It's very cute. It's a good step forward in them having at least a like friendly relationship, if not a romantic one. Putting aside all that, I think this had some interesting things to say about social media and the way that bullying in like the age of teens having social media is so much worse than just like in-person bullying because they can't get away from it when they go home. Like social media follows you everywhere. So it's not like, oh, I'm being bullied at school, but I can go home and it's like a refuge. It's you go home and you log onto the computer and there they are again telling you to kill yourself or calling you slurs. I think that was an interesting element to this uh, mystery. I think I gave this one four stars again. She does not disappoint. I am just racing through these. They're so good. And I have started the next one, Gallows Rock. I put this one on hold at the library and was like anxiously waiting for the notification that my hold had come in uh, and then like raced over as soon as it popped up. And I am 172 pages through this and I think I maybe finally have some idea of what's happening, like who the, who the bad guy's gonna be. So basically this one is they find a guy hanging from this place called Gallows Rock and he's got like a nail in his chest and there was a note that was like attached to the nail but like it's gone by the time the police get there 
So there's that. And then Freya, working with uh, like the Children's Protective Services, gets a call that there is like a kid left alone in an apartment and it turns out to be the dead guy's apartment. And they don't know who the kid is and he's like four so he can't tell them anything super useful. So they're trying to figure out like where's his family? Why aren't they all in a panic about him? What happened with the guy who was killed because at first they thought it was suicide and then they're like hmm, no there's a nail in his chest. That's not suicide. And where I'm at in the book is they've finally figured out who the parents are of the child. They've gone missing like they don't know where they are but they figured out who the kid belongs to. So I'm thinking it's either maybe like the dad of the kid? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Because he's potentially abusing his wife. So potentially the father. I'm not convinced. I'm not sold on that. I think that's going to be like the red herring. Maybe one of the like hanged man's friends? Or because the man was only in Iceland for like a year and a half and he had come over like he's born in Iceland, he's in America, and then he came back to Iceland and he'd only been there for 18 months. So I think maybe like someone in America like got some like shady financial dealings or something and then they're like kind of getting revenge because they said the parents of the kid were like on the verge of bankruptcy. So maybe something there. I feel like maybe financially they're entangled somehow. I am not like convinced of either of these theories. I feel like I have no clue. I, I don't know at all. Like the last one I was like, ooh, I think it could be this person. Even like the one before, I feel like I had some idea. Not a goddamn idea. No clue. So I I don't know. I'll let you know if I'm right. This feels like almost a game of like trying to guess who done it. I'm not great at it. Uh Irsa's really got me in a all in a tizzy trying to figure out who kills all these people. Although they have finally given up on being like, oh my god, crime never happens in Iceland. No one ever gets murdered in Iceland. I'm like, you've just had like four very gruesome murders within like, I feel like fairly close proximity to each other. At least one a year. That's kind of a lot. Maybe not like a lot a lot, but the way they were talking it's like no one has ever been murdered in Iceland. I'm like, well, you've personally dealt with four really gruesome murders, so... Not four murders, like four murder cases. So like... Don't think you can really say that anymore. And they seem to have realized that too, which is fun. One thing I have noticed with these books, um, they're all translated by Victoria Cribb and they're all, I don't know where she lives, where she's from. It does not say. It just gives her credentials for being able to try translate Icelandic, but it is like British English that is translated into instead of like American English, like they spell tire with a Y. What else? They say like flats instead of apartments. Now, there, are, there are other examples in there too, um, but I've definitely noticed throughout the books that they've been translated into British English, which is interesting. I guess it makes sense because Iceland is a lot closer to Britain and it's part of Europe versus America, but just, just interesting. Anyways, those, these are my thoughts so far. I, I'm real tired. Head empty. No thoughts, just murder vibes in the book, not in real life. Please don't be concerned. <laughs> this has been good though. I'm very excited about these. They have a little bit put me in a reading slump. Like I, so I finished The Absolution two days ago and I was waiting for this one to come in and I started reading Gone Girl, which has been good, but it's been like going a lot slower because all I can think about is when will I get this book? And like what's gonna happen? Irsa's got me in a chokehold and I cannot get enough. And I don't know if this would apply to like her other books too, like the other, her standalones or her other series. Maybe I'm just like obsessed with these characters and the other books wouldn't be quite as gripping, but I think I would still enjoy them. Thanks again to my friend for recommending them. I did not expect them to give me this brain rot, but I'm, gr I'm glad is great. I love being invested in series like this and it's also great because they're not, it's not really cliffhangers or anything, you know, and you can read them out of order fairly easily. Like she does a good job of being like, oh yeah, and like this thing, which like happened like this very briefly without being egregious, um, but also so you don't like just jump in and you're like, oh, what the heck's going on? But I'm just so excited for them because I really do enjoy these characters and 
want to know what her twisted mind is going to come up with next. It's always something mildly upsetting, but very interesting. So I will let you know when I finish this. I finished it. Another four star read. Irsa can do no wrong. I feel like now that I've said that I've jinxed myself, but so far she's, she's doing great. Um, I did not at all guess who did the murder in this one. I had no clue. It was a lot more convoluted than I thought, but it ended up being the, I can't remember what I, who I predicted it was going to be, but it was the, it was a lot of people who kind of contributed to this. But it was like the caretaker of the dead guy's like apartment complex, like property manager kind of guy who killed him because his daughter was gang raped by the guy and his friends who take videos of themselves having sex with women without the women knowing and then they have like their own little like private website on the dark web, just the four of them where they like share it with each other. That part was never really explained why they did it. They just kind of did it. And they're like, yeah, we just, it's just a thing they do. And you're like, why? And they're like, they just do it. The little boy's mother was in one of those videos, like just not being raped, but like just having sex with one of the guys when she was in the off part of her on and off relationship with the boy's father. And then, so the boy's father was like enraged and so wanted to hurt this guy and so teamed up with the caretaker to kill him and brought along his wife and child to be like you're part of this now and like you can't turn me into the cops but then she ended up killing her husband and the caretaker took the fall for that as well as for the murder of the original dead guy it's a lot it's so much it's like it was i can't even explain properly this sounds diluted yeah it's very convoluted just read the book just read the book. There you go. I think my only like, not quite complaint, but my like one thing with her books is that they tend to like tie up pretty quickly. Like they'll be like, you know, there's the crime and they're investigating and they're bringing people in for things. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden something will like tip them off or they'll figure out something. And then it'll be like a boss, like 30 pages or something where they're like, here's how they did it. Here's what's happening. And you're like, blah, 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 blah. and they're like, yep, here it is. Here's a whole confession monologue. Okay, and we're done. Goodbye. Oh, and before we leave, quick, one more little tiny twist that the detectives don't know. Hee hee hee. Okay, bye. It's not terrible or anything. It just, it'd be nice if there's a little more of like, you can kind of see the detectives start to piece it together. I guess that's like to kind of leave you in the dark so that the twist is very twisty. But I do find that they're like, oh, and then they're like, and do you know this man? And like, oh my god, I know him. And like, aha! And I'm like, wait, what? Where did you come up with this idea? But that's what, it's okay. It's fine. Now, my problem, my big conundrum, is I have the next book in this series on hold at the library. But I'm number three in line on five copies. And I've been number three in line since I put it on hold like a week ago. Hasn't it even been that long? Probably not. I so desperately want to read more of this series. And I don't want to wait to be number one in line and to like wait for this book because like it might be November or something at that point. Um, but the one at, that comes out after that actually isn't out yet. It comes out October 25th, which thank God it comes out in four days because if I had to wait, I would go insane. I literally go insane. Then after I read them, I can keep them if I want or I could give them to someone else. I know a lot of people... I have a lot of people in my life who read like mystery thriller books that I think would enjoy these so I can pass on the love. I should just buy them. I'm trying to be better about my spending, you know, in this economy who can buy books, but I do have my staff discount. So yeah, I think I'm just going to buy the next two books because I can't wait. I'm impatient and I know I will enjoy them. I don't know. I'm really tired. Once again, I had an early 5 a.m. shift, so I am struggling as I always do, um, and I'm just rambling. So that that's that's my dilemma. I think we've come to a conclusion between you and I. We've decided I'm just gonna buy the book and we're just gonna deal with the disappointed look in my boyfriend's eyes when I come home with more books. Oh, oh, I also wanted to say in this, Freya and Hulder are like, they're circling, we're circling something. It's, it's, it's a coming. 
it's a coming. He's very sweet with her niece, which is adorable. He's like, ah, hello niece, like, would you like to go out for dinner with me tomorrow? And she goes, yes. And he's like, oh, we're gonna need a chaperone. She's too young to go out. I guess you'll have to come with us, which I thought was very funny and like kind of charming. Like, you know, he's like, oh, no, I don't want to hang out with you. I want to hang out with your adorable, like, toddler niece. But I guess you'll just have to come along, too, anyways. Oh. So I thought that was pretty cute. So, next book, The Doll. If I have to deal with a creepy-ass doll, I better get some relationship progress with my two detective peoples. There also, like, wasn't a ton of Freya in this like at the beach she was there at the beginning but then we kind of like focused more on the like murder and less on the like boy having been left in the apartment because he's like four years old and can't say anything about his parents so like there's a lot less of Freya in the, in the like second half of the book which is too bad because I love her she's great but um she's gonna now live in an apartment with a python so that's very exciting for her I don't envy her having to feed like mice or something to that snake my brother had toads when we were younger and they were very cute and they were fun to play with when my parents were cleaning the cage but oh my god the crickets and the mealworms that my parents fed to them were so disgusting so i can't imagine feeding a mouse to a snake anyways i am very tired i have to go order some books now so uh needs must and uh i'll see you once i get my hands on the next book hopefully so I did end up buying the doll by her, and I also bought the next one, the Fallout, but I'm still waiting for that to arrive. Um, but I've started reading this, I am 198 pages into it, and I have no clue who done it. I, not, I got nothing. I don't know. They're like three different crimes. Somehow they're linked. I... not a goddamn idea. My brain cells are not firing today. Um, I'll read you the synopsis because my brain just can't come up with a cohesive way of explaining this plot because there's a lot going on. But um, the synopsis says, it was meant to be a quiet family fishing trip, a chance for mother and daughter to talk. They catch nothing except a broken, terrifying doll. The mother's first instinct is to throw it back, but her daughter pleads to keep it. That evening, the mother posts a picture on social media. It proves fatal. Several years later, and Detective Hulder, Hulder, I don't know how to say his name, Anyways, must use psychologist Freya's experience to help him identify a body found in the sea. But when Holder is also drawn into an investigation of a homeless drug addict's murder and Freya investigates a suspected case of a child abuse, it swiftly becomes clear that all paths lead back to the doll. 200 pages in, it is not clear that all paths lead back to the doll. Um, we had the part where they found the doll in the ocean and we had the part where the mom dies and then there's like, the doll near her when she dies and then the girl who sees her mom die is like claiming that the doll killed her but other than that like the other two cases don't have the doll at all so far so I don't know when that's coming around because there are 450 pages so I'm almost halfway through this book and the doll's only really in one case so far but that's fine and I'm sure I'll finish filming this and then like in two pages the doll will show up because that's normally how it goes with uh th this video with these books where I'm like I don't understand how this is connected and then five pages later I'm like oh just wasn't far enough in the book yet but yeah I got no clue what's going on like I'm following the plot but I just I have no clue who did these things what's going on how they're related to the doll so I'm just here for the ride I've given up trying to guess because they all seem very disparate and not connected at all so it'll be great when she ties it all together and I'm like oh my god how did I not see that but the uh definitely the doll is terrifying though like the few descriptions we've had of it is like I can picture it very vividly in my mind it also doesn't help that there's a I think the cover on Goodreads has like the doll's broken face on the front which is horrifying and thank god this one does not this is a much less creepy picture of just like someone walking a girl walking it's not even a doll on here which is great I don't want I don't want that doll in my house on my bookcase anywhere I can see it no thank you um, I think this book is probably the most likely to give me nightmares out of all of them so far because of the doll 
So like true crime stuff I'm normally okay with, like it's kind of creepy, a little bit gross, but I can deal with it. But like supernatural things, like a creepy doll who's maybe killing people, I can't do it. It's too scary for me. So I fully expect to have at least one mini nightmare because of this. Um, so I'm going to have to find another book to read simultaneously that will be like a palate cleanser of a book so that I'm not reading this too close to bedtime and then it creeps into my dreams. So Freya and Holdar are like kind of on more like friendly grounds now which is good. Like he came over after they were going over a case and like brought food for her and her uh, niece that she's taking care of at the moment. And like they had a really lovely little kind of family meal. It was so cute. And then he got called away for work, which is so sad. Um, but Freya's also taking a vow of celibacy for 30 days. And I think that might be the tipping point in the relationship. Like I wish there was a little bit more of their relationship in these books, but I think it's, she does a very good job of like putting just like tantalizing little glimpses in there where you're like, ah, just get together already. <sighs> and maybe this one. Maybe this will be it. God, I hope so. But anyways, um, yeah, I will catch up with y'all once I finish this. So I will see you then. Stayed up too late finishing the doll. And then I had to work at five in the morning. So we're, we've got half a brain cell just barely flickering. But we're going to get through this together. It's you and me, guys. Let's go. All right, um, so last I updated you, I had no clue who was involved in this, who done it, anything. And it wasn't until probably like maybe two thirds of the way through the book that I was kind of like, oh, wait, they mentioned a fishing trip here. And now this guy goes fishing like, hmm, there's something going on. Um, but I, I you can never predict how these how these are going to end. So I was in the dark up until the final reveal and there was just like so much going on and so many people involved in this and I was like oh my god this is so convoluted how do you come up with this stuff but it was very good um thankfully the doll is not really a huge thing like she's like connected to the different cases but she doesn't feature a lot which is great because it's very creepy. The descriptions of the doll are very creepy and I did not enjoy those, but um, thankfully it wasn't a major part where she was talked about all the time. I was right though that Freya's like 30 day vow of celibacy would then lead her to, to uh, you know, hooking up with Huldar again. Huldar? Huldar? I still I can't, I can't say his name. Um, but they did end up hooking up. So, and that was just like right at the very end of the book. So I don't know what's going to happen with them. But hopefully it won't be like the first time when they hooked up where they just go, they go back to like being complete strangers. I'm hoping that this is finally a turn in their relationship and they can finally be together because they're just a couple little dum-dums. Well, mostly him. He's mostly the dum-dum and she's just kind of not been quick to forgive him, which is fair. I'm glad to finally see their relationship play out in more than just little snippets of like him asking her out and her being like get lost dude so excited for the next book uh i have ordered it it's on its way i don't know what i'm gonna get here so i will just be impatiently reading other books while i wait for the next one to come but anyways that is my video um what have we learned what have we learned uh icelandic I don't know if it's all Icelandic crime writers, but at least this Icelandic crime writer is very gruesome, but does really good plot twists. What else have we learned? We've learned that I am really bad at predicting the outcome of mystery books, but that's not a surprise. I can't predict anything. Like we'll be watching a movie and a friend will be like, oh, this is how it's going to end. And I'm like, oh my God, how did you come up with that? That's crazy. And I feel like those are, those are the two things that we have learned here today. Thank you for watching this video. I'd highly recommend checking out uh, Irsa's books if you enjoy a good thriller, mystery, crime book. They're just so gripping and engaging and I stayed up far too late reading most of them because I just couldn't put them down and I was like, I have to know what's happening. So if you're looking for a really gripping book, I feel like these would be good for getting you out of a reading slump. Uh, they're just 
real page turners. So highly recommend them. Let me know if you do end up checking them out or if you have like other crime writers, maybe even like Scandinavian Icelandic crime writers that you really enjoy. Uh, leave me a suggestion down below because I'm definitely open, a lot more open now to reading this like genre and this style of book than I was before. But thank you also to my friend for suggesting this author. I've had such a great time reading her books and very happy to have taken this chance on the series and the genre. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Go read a book. I feel like there should be a, I don't know, a sticker or something that says siblings not soulmates. I don't know what possible use that would have other than this book, but it would be, it's just fun, I like the siblings murder and rape and all sorts of bad shenanigans going on. Shenanigans is why we're using